You've been getting sloppy with your cleaning, haven't you? I noticed us piling up in the corners. You're a stay-at-home wife, so please get it right. If I see dust the next time, I'm selling your laptop. My husband, John, started acting cold towards me as my workload increased as a cartoonist. At times when I was busy with deadlines, he would annoyingly give me specific instructions about housework and even make me redo the cleaning. John seems to expect perfect housework from me as a housewife, but being a cartoonist has been my dream since childhood. I don't want to give up now. Moreover, John seems to be keeping something from me. I'm not going to forgive him anymore. I am Anne, 31 years old, a freelance cartoonist. I draw essay-style cartoons and work diligently during the breaks between housework, being a working housewife. John, who's 35, and I registered our marriage six years ago on the condition that I would become a full-time housewife. Two years into our marriage, both of my parents passed away, and we started living in the house I inherited as an only child. I didn't want to quit drawing cartoons, which I've been doing since my student days, so I pleaded with John, saying, I'm fine with becoming a housewife, but my dream is to make a living through my cartoons. I'm only publishing independent comics now, but could you allow me to work from home? He told me it sounded like a hobby, but gave me his approval, so I continued drawing after marriage. However, six months ago, a magazine editor noticed the cartoon that I had published on my site, and I started getting a two-page, four-panel cartoon in a monthly magazine. Since then, I started receiving more offers, drawing cartoons and illustrations, and my days have been busy. But when I told John about it, he openly looked disgusted. You're getting carried away, aren't you? You're supposed to be a housewife first, and your cartoons are just a hobby, right? I bet your pay is like a child's allowance, isn't it? Why are you saying things like that? I know you don't read or like cartoons, John, but I've always dreamed of becoming a cartoonist. It's a small job, sure, but since I'm getting paid, I'm a professional. Don't say things like that. But when I argued back, John became even more upset. You're living off of me, and you have the audacity to talk back. If you have complaints, start earning more than me. I was left speechless. I often earn around $600 a month, but I try not to take on too much work because of him. Furthermore, John is always saying things like, You've been getting sloppy with your cleaning, haven't you? I noticed us piling up in the corners. You're a stay-at-home wife, so please get it right. If I see dust the next time, I'm selling your laptop. Especially when I'm busy with deadlines. Even though I know he's not serious, it scares me. In the end, I spend time cleaning and sometimes miss my deadlines. John seems annoyed when he sees me busy and bothers me by pointing out minor household chores. One day, it happened. John has a habit of eating dinner as soon as he gets home from work. That day, like always, he sat at the table, and the moment he took a bite of the stew, he erupted. Hey, what's this? The carrot isn't cooked all the way through. Are you messing with me? I come home tired and this is what you serve your husband? I had been zoning out after meeting a deadline, but John's outburst startled me, and I turned to face him. At that moment, John grabbed the beer-filled glass in front of him and splashed it over me. I was stunned. I never thought I would ever get beer splashed on me in my life. Since I hadn't imagined this would happen, the shock was all the greater. I... I'm sorry, I must have zoned out while cooking. The rest should be okay, so you can leave the carrot. I realized mid-cooking that I had somehow forgotten to add the carrots, and in my rush, I had thrown them into the stew without parboiling them. Even though I had checked that the potatoes were thoroughly cooked, I had completely forgotten about the carrots. I usually don't make such mistakes. I feel pathetic.
It seems that John could not forgive this mistake more than I had thought. It's the worst to have a housewife who can't even do household chores properly. I shouldn't have married you. John said that, got up from his seat, and started to leave the dining room. I chased after John in a hurry, and he headed for the bedroom. Where are you going? I'm leaving the house until you reflect on what you've done. What? I stood there bewildered as John packed his belongings into a travel bag and really left. I chased after him, but when John got to the nearest station, he got into a taxi and went somewhere. No matter how many times I called, he didn't answer, and he didn't even read the apology text I sent him. I collapsed on the spot and burst into tears. At that moment, I felt a tap on my shoulder. When I turned around, there stood Mr. Tom, John's boss. In fact, I used to work at the same company as John until we got married. Mr. Tom was my boss and he had enthusiastically trained me when I first joined the company. Mr. Tom? I've become a section manager now. It's been a while, hasn't it? Since your wedding? Why are you crying? You smell like alcohol. Did you go drinking with your apron? Hello, I'm embarrassed to say this, but I had a fight with John. Ah, oh, that guy. He can be condescending sometimes. It's bearable when he's a bit annoying at work, but I bet living together as a married couple, it's irritating, right? Mr. Tom said that and gave me a bright, cheerful smile. How many times had this smile saved me when I made a mistake at work in the past? Mr. Tom and I decided to stop by a nearby diner to chat. So, why were you crying? Well, it's my fault. I messed up with the cooking today. I tried to make a stew, but the carrots weren't cooked well, and I upset John. Haha, <laughs> is that it? My wife is pretty much the same. When things like this happen, we just accept it as it is. Getting angry won't do any good, you know? I like that perspective. As I said this, a smile broke out as we talked. So, you two didn't have a fight when drinking out then? No, the reason I smell of beer is because John got angry about the cooking and splashed beer on me. I ran to the train station thinking I had dried off, but I still smell, don't I? I took a sniff of my clothes. Even if you're told you smell of alcohol, it's hard to tell for sure yourself. What? He splashed beer over you just because you messed up a little with the cooking? That John, something's not right with him. I didn't like the guy from the start, but I can't believe he'd do such a thing to his wife. Mr. Tom was genuinely angry, as if he'd been the one who had beer splashed on him. That somehow made me happy. So, why did you come to this station? You must have run all the way here in your apron. Is it another John-related issue? Yeah, John acted weird, called me a lazy wife, and left the house saying he wouldn't come back until I reflected on my actions. I chased after him and ended up here at the station, but he took a cab and just left. I was at a loss. Uh? Mr. Tom's face, which had been angry until now, suddenly became stiff. After a moment of silence, he said, I can't tell you right now, but I have a bad feeling about this. I'll do some digging on John, too. And you, there might be something John left behind at home. You might want to look around. I didn't understand what he meant, but I nodded and we disbanded for the day. Mr. Tom escorted me home. Following Mr. Tom's advice, I checked John's often-used shelves and rummaged through John's clothes, where I found a hotel points card in the pocket of his pants. The card showed it had been used quite recently, around noon on a Saturday, when he claimed he had to work. This led me to be sure that John was cheating on me, and I suddenly remembered something I had completely forgotten. It was something we talked about before getting married. We had agreed it would be handy if we could locate each other's phones using GPS in case one of us lost ours. 
We researched together and installed a special app for locating devices, which I had completely forgotten about. I launched the app and entered the password and discovered that John was in a rather surprising place. He was at a famous tourist spot. It was a well-known dating spot and I couldn't imagine he would go there all alone. I assumed that John was on a trip with his mistress and decided to act on that assumption. The next day, I called the company and asked to speak to Mr. Tom. Mr. Tom, thank you for yesterday. No problem. Was there something? Is it possible that John didn't come to work today? Mr. Tom was silent for a while. But after letting out a long sigh, he said, Ah, uh, yes. He's on a paid leave for the next four days. I thought as much. I don't like to say it, but he's probably... Yes, I understand, but this gives me some clarity. Thank you. After hanging up, I made a resolution and left the house. I had been thinking about it. If John ever betrayed me, this is what I would do. After finishing my task, I called another person. Hello, it's been a while. The person on the other end spoke to me in a bright voice, but as soon as I started talking about John, they sided with me. I hung up the phone, feeling reassured, believing that things would surely move in a favorable direction. The next day, along with some people, I went to the location indicated by John's smartphone GPS. It was right inside a resort hotel near a famous tourist spot. Right now, he seemed to be outside the hotel, with the GPS indicating he was near the beach. John turned pale the moment he saw my face. With a smirk, I aimed my phone at John and rapidly clicked pictures. To get a two-shot with the girl in her early 20s standing next to him. By the way, I had been taking photos since 30 minutes ago when John was applying suntan oil to this woman in a bikini. I let him swim until I could get definite proof that John was cheating. Perhaps because of their liberating environment or their minds were utterly clear, they were kissing in public. I felt no shock, perhaps because my patience had run out. Rather, I was grateful that they provided such good evidence. What surprised John and turned him pale wasn't just because he saw my face. Behind me there were my in-laws, both casting stern glances at John. What's going on, John? As I approached with a smile, John flustered, stumbled in the sand, and fell on his rear end. Seeing this, my mother-in-law heaved a sigh. How pathetic, even for my own son. And who might this lady be? You abandon your wife, and what are you up to? But it's because this woman doesn't do any housework. John hastily pointed at me and blamed me. Oh, is it correct to say she does absolutely nothing? Even if she occasionally skips cleaning, she does laundry, cooking, and dishes every day, doesn't she? Even I sometimes skip cleaning, and I dislike laundry so much, I leave it to your father at times. That's because you had a part-time job, isn't it? It's different with this woman. She's a stay-at-home wife who just spends her time drawing and playing. Why can't she at least properly do housework? At John's words, my father-in-law was enraged. You don't understand anything. Even the people around us were startled and focused on us. Some seems like they might point their smartphone cameras at us. Why don't we discuss this in a more appropriate setting? Everyone agreed with my suggestion, and my in-laws and I went ahead to a nearby restaurant. John and the woman he was cheating with, Mary, changed from their swimsuits to casual clothes and met up with us, and the five of us sat down together. We started by hearing John's side of the story. I wanted Anne to be a stay-at-home wife, but she started this useless hobby of drawing cartoons and neglected the housework. 
which he won't do as I say, it's natural that I would look for the next candidate for a wife. The one to retort to that was Mary. Eh? Huh? Isn't that different from what you told me? You said you were troubled because a stalker was coming to your house and you wanted me to help you forget about the unpleasant reality for a while. I suggested that you should report to the police, but you said that it was only a matter of time until the stalker would be caught. Knowing you had a wife, I wouldn't have dated you. With that, Mary started crying. It seems she's still a college student and she had met John on a dating app. She was drawn to an older man and decided to date him, but now she was lamenting that she had been deceived. I'm really sorry, I won't contact John again. I'll take this as a good lesson and make sure I'm not fooled next time. After bowing deeply to me and my in-laws, Mary showed us the screen where she had deleted John's number. Then she left a few bills for her coffee on the table and left. I glared at John, who was in a daze after Mary had left. It's natural that I won't do exactly as you say. I have my own feelings and circumstances. I'm not a robot you can control. Running off to have an affair just because things aren't going well is despicable. John seemed to want to say something, but my father-in-law spoke first. You still seem dissatisfied, huh? But I'm the one who's earning and feeding Anne, aren't I? Anne should respect me as the breadwinner. John was shaking with anger, but my father-in-law spoke to him calmly. You're still just like a child. Just because things aren't going your way, you're throwing tantrums just like a toddler. Accept Anne's wishes as they are. There's nothing more for us to tell you. His in-laws then got up, took the check, and headed to the register. John and I were left alone, and I too had nothing more to say to him. John, I've been offered a serial comic strip in a magazine. John, who was a complete change from before, looked at me with a startled expression. Oh, um, congratulations. So, I can no longer be the stay-at-home wife you want. I'm sorry. I'm tired of being with you, John. I want a divorce. I'm sorry. It was all my fault. You can draw as many comics as you want. I'll help with the housework, too. I won't say arrogant things anymore. John pleaded with tears in his eyes, but I averted my gaze from him. I didn't want to see any more of my husband's pathetic figure. I'm sorry, but that's not the problem anymore. You were looking down on me, weren't you? I thought marriage was about equal standing, but you were different, John. You thought you were superior because you were working and providing for me, right? No, I mean, maybe I did, but I've had a change of heart. I promise I won't make you suffer anymore, so don't say we should break up. I've decided to sell the house we were living in. I have a relative who runs a real estate agency, and when I told them about the situation, they agreed to buy it right away. There's still some paperwork and things to do, so it's not like we can sell it right away. But it will be a lower price than if we had it brokered. But it's my house, and I can do what I want with it, right? I want to end our relationship as soon as possible. I plan to leave tomorrow. You should leave the house as soon as possible, too. With that, I got up from my seat and started walking towards the exit. Unlike the day when John had left the house, this time he was desperately chasing after me. But when I got into the car my in-laws had, my father-in-law, who was in the driver's seat, started the car the moment I slammed the door. John was chasing after us, crying, but I couldn't see him anymore. After that, it seemed John didn't believe my words. When he returned from his trip and saw the house with all my belongings gone, he called me crying. Out of pity, I answered the phone one last time. Why did you sell the house? It was our house, wasn't it? Why are you saying such absurd things? It's the house I inherited from my parents, remember? Then I should have rights to it too, right? Actually, there are no rights to inherited property for a spouse. If you understand, get out of the house as soon as possible, and expect a call from the lawyer about alimony and the divorce. 
Don't run away, okay? I said what I wanted to say and hung up the phone. After that, it seems John was scolded by Mr. Tom for taking paid vacation to go on a trip with his mistress. There's no need to give a reason for taking paid vacation, but it seems he was harshly questioned for betraying his wife to go on a trip. It seems he is having a tough time being looked down on by his co-workers and feeling uncomfortable every day. And his in-laws have also abandoned John. John tried to return to his in-laws' house, but they refused him. After paying alimony, John had drained his savings and started to accumulate debt. He's now living alone in a cheap apartment, incapable of properly managing household chores, and seems to be leading a disordered life. I heard about this later from Mr. Tom, but I felt nothing. As for me, I moved into a neat studio apartment and am hard at work on the draft for my serialized comic strip. It's an anthology-style comic, and I'm gathering and using various people's stories as references. The next story I'm planning to draw is themed around a husband's infidelity, and I'm considering using John as a material.